I want to switch gears a little bit and go into your health. I know that you had struggled from fibroids. Yes. And I want you to tell me and everybody here and people yes. at home what that is and how severe this is. Right. It really is. And a lot of women uh, will experience having fibroids. Uh, every one in four Caucasian women and every one in three African American women would experience. So it's about 70% of women overall will experience uh, fibroids. And what it is, it's a uh, overgrowth of smooth muscle tissue, often on the uterus or around the uterus, right? So I had like... I think maybe 10 of them or seven to 10 of them, but I know I had two of them that were like the size of grapefruits, right? Wow. And I can remember, and these are some of the symptoms, ladies, like you might have heavy bleeding. It may be for an elongated period of time. You may have a lower abdomen pain, back pains. Uh, I had frequent urination because I had one actually sitting on my bladder so much that if wow. I would try to hold my urine, it would just like literally, I would be in pain. Like needles were just sticking me, sticking me, sticking me. Yeah. So it can be, it can be a bit stressful That is. To say the least yeah. yeah 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 and and I think it's important that you're sharing this with us because I think a lot of us we we don't take care of our bodies we don't listen to our bodies that is true that is yeah true. And, and, and here's another symptom too is a, um, weight gain so I my stomach is normally as flat as the floor that we walk on so when I was like wait a minute what is happening <laughs> oh my god you know so I'm like this is this is not like me like I like to eat but honey I don't retain the weight yeah. you know and so that was one of them because I had those fibroids and they were large and they were growing inside um so for me I had the assessor procedure it's um a new procedure that's out there probably been around about five or six years but I only have very 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 small incisions um I was able to start up and running again about a week later after the surgery versus having a hysterectomy, then that means a person would conform to possibly if ever getting pregnant, you would have to have a cesarean. And I didn't want that, oh, you know? Okay. Okay. Um, and then some people even have full hysterectomies. Uh, I know a young girl who was every bit of 26 years old, never had children, and her doctor offered a hysterectomy. I don't understand why, but I do want to encourage women to go out there, pay attention to your bodies, listen to your bodies. I know I'm the type of person, I'm always busy. I, I'll just go, 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 go. And, you know, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a good idea for me, and it's not a good idea for everyone. So if you if you yeah. see something different in your health, just go and see about it. And if, if they're not offering a SESA, then ask about it. Do the research. I was going to go to Chicago and actually have a friend to uh, conduct the surgery for me, but then I was so lucky that I had one of my sorority sisters say no. You know, Dr. Sweeney Hawkins, she is in Atlanta, and she's one of the best at it. And and I had my surgery there. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. That's awesome. Her. Thank you so much for sharing that because oh, people absolutely. need to know, know this. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to be quiet about it. I mean, who wants to say that they had heavy bleeding? But hell, if it helps somebody, then it helps somebody. Yeah, yeah. No one really wants to say that, but you're not alone when you're going through these things. You're really not. Yeah, and I didn't even know what this was. So it's mm. so it's so good when people talk about things like this because yeah. it, it brings up knowledge yeah, about absolutely. the situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah.